Hello loved one, it's Bible time, that time of the evening when we deep dive into the absolutely immaculate, amazing, wonderful and absolutely worth your time and attention, Word of God. Today, the scripture I shared this morning was from Philippians chapter 2 and you know I love the letter to the Philippians because it has so many gems, not only of encouragement but also correction and today we're going to be going into a corrective um, part of the letter to the Philippians which has to do with this whole concept about looking out for self first, which it is a natural instinct to look out for ourselves first, but Jesus calls us to do different. So we'll read from chapter 2, from verse 1. So if there's any encouragement in Christ, any comfort from love, any participation in the Spirit, any affection and sympathy, complete my joy by being of the same mind, having the same love, being in full accord and of one mind. Do we not have encouragement with Christ? We do. Do we have any comfort from love all day, every day? Any participation in the Spirit? He lives in us. Any affection and sympathy? We live on it daily. That's God's mercies. And so Paul is encouraging that if those things are true, which we know to be true, then we must be on one of one mind, being united. But then this is when the good stuff starts in verse 3. Let's just read it. Verse 3 says, Do nothing from selfish ambition or conceit, but in humility count others more significant than yourselves. Let each of you look not only to his own interests, but also to the interests of others. Doesn't this go against everything you've come to know about being an adult, you know? The natural instinct is always to look out for ourselves first, to look out for number one. And if not number one, then for me and mine, my close family and friends, those people who matter to me, but not everybody else who's out here in these streets. And sometimes we say that so proudly, that I come first. It's all about me, you know. And this is not what this verse is saying. This verse is actually saying, do nothing out of selfish ambition or conceit. And it says that by not doing anything out of ambition or conceit is to be humble because then you're able to count others more significant than yourself. This is a hard teaching, guys. Let each of you not only look to their own interests, but also the interests of others. So it's saying, don't always be about you. Don't always be about number one, looking out for number one and the interests of number one. We actually have to be intentional with considering the interests of other people with whom we have a relationship. You know, um, and we'll see the reason why. And Paul writes it so beautifully. You'll see now in verse 5 why that is. Verse 5 says, Have this in mind among yourselves, which is yours in Christ Jesus, who, though he was in the form of God, did not count equality with God a thing to be grasped. Listen, if I <laughs> was Jesus and I had equality with God, y'all were going to hear from me, honey, okay? It would all be about me. I'd be focused on my own interest because anyway, the world was created through me and for me and by me. I mean, that I have every right to have my own interests at heart. But it says, no, Jesus did not. He, unlike what we would do if we were in his shoes, did not consider equality with God something to be grasped instead it said but emptied himself by taking the form of a servant being born in the likeness of men and being found in human form he humbled himself by becoming obedient to the point of death even death on the cross then it says therefore God has highly exalted and bestowed him on the name him the name that is above every name so that the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth. And every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. So Jesus is our example. He had every right. He is God. <laughs> he had every right to look out for his own interests. But instead, but instead, you know what Jesus did? He humbled himself. He became a servant. He even washed the feet of the disciples. God washed the feet of human beings. He did not allow his right, right? Because we have a right to put ourselves first, do we not? We do. Because if you don't look after yourself, who's going to look after you? That's the thing we tell ourselves. But Jesus is an example for us that shows us that we must think. Because imagine if Jesus didn't put our interest first, 
our interest in salvation first. Imagine if he only thought about himself and he opted out. Where would we be? We would be lost. We would be without a father. We would be without a friend. We would be without the Holy Spirit. It would be a very dark existence for us. But Jesus did not consider his way above God's way. Nor did he consider his interest above the interests of God and of our own interest. And in as much as we weren't part and privy to the fact that he was considering us in that time, we see now that he did. Imagine the self-control it took for him to be able to do this. And I love Jesus because he set that example for us. He's the bar. And if he's the bar, then we ought to also be humble and start to consider the interests of other people. And I know personally I struggle with this because I grew up for a long time as an only child, okay? And my brother came into my life probably was a reason. And because of that, me growing up mostly as an only child until my brother came into my life, probably in my teens, I struggle to think about the interests of other people. You know, it doesn't come naturally to me. And my husband, it comes very naturally for him to be that way. So if you're like me, it's scriptures like these that must inspire you to have a personality change. Being a Christian calls for a personality change. You can't continue the way you were in the world in Christ because of these things that we are required to do to humble ourselves and to consider the interests of others above our own. So that takes intentionality. That takes you in a situation always taking a step back to say, okay, what are my interests and what are the interests of other people? And you consider those above your own. And that is a hard, hard teaching in a world where you feel like there's nobody who's looking out for you. But man, God is always looking out for you. And that is why it's, it must be easy then for us to be humble as he was humble. Because we know that he looks out for our interests, even if we're focused on the interests of other people. Because he's a faithful God and a faithful father and a faithful friend. So I hope, loved one, that this scripture will inspire you to do so. You know, I was actually reading up on this selfish ambition thing. You know, it says in James, in James, I think it says that all kinds of evil are found where selfish ambition prevails. So we need to be cognizant. Please stop underestimating the enemy. <laughs> One thing about the enemy, he hides in plain sight. In those things, you know, selfish ambition feels good. To look out for yourself feels good. It makes you feel safe and secure because you know that I'm looking out for me. But man, that's where the enemy hides. And James actually says it, and I'll repeat. It says all types of evil are found where selfish ambition prevails. So this is not something to be taken lightly. This is something that has eternal consequences for us. That we must not be consumed by selfish ambition or conceit but instead humble ourselves enough to consider the interests of others, whether it be in the workplace, whether it be at church, whether it be in relationships, above our own. That is the way of Christ. That is the example of Christ. And that is what he calls us to do. I hope that you hear it. I hope that you're internalizing it. I hope that you're noting it down because this is one that is important. Sometimes the enemy doesn't come into our lives through demon possession or torment or any temptation. Sometimes it's stuff like these with the selfish ambition that we tell ourselves, I'm only looking out for my interest and the interest of those whom I love, that he comes into your heart and plants evil. So stay alert and stay sober-minded, loved one. The devil is prowling around like a lion looking for whom he can devour. And I hope that person won't be you. So guard against selfish ambition and conceit. That is the instruction from Philippians 2. And that's a wrap, loved one. That's all from me today. I hope today was yet another day that you counted towards obedience in the kingdom of Christ. Do you guys recite this with me now? Because I say it every other video. I hope that you were able to hear the voice of the Holy Spirit as he whispered. And the longer you listen, the louder he becomes. I hope God's word was part and parcel of your existence today and that your heart was speaking it to you and you meditated on it. I hope that the word you heard will, will bear fruits and will be able to equip you to also equip others to do good works and encourage them in good works. I love you and I hope that today was a good day in the Lord. And if it was a hard day, I want to reassure you and remind you that your Lord never leaves you nor forsakes you. He keeps a watchful high over you. He does not slumber nor sleep. That is your God. So don't you ever give up 
or, or doubt him in who he is, in who he's proved himself to be. Because one thing about Jesus, he proved himself to be a good God. And therefore, I hope that you come to realize it and not sleep on God. Because one thing about him, he's always on time. He gave you all. <laughs> Baby, be mine. <laughs> okay, J-Lo? Um, yeah, so that's it for me. Have a lovely evening. Tomorrow we're going to be doing a scripture of praise. Every Friday we praise our God, regardless of circumstance. And I can't wait to share it with you. See you in a few hours.